Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Good morning, this is uh, Professor Y.K. Gupta and today we would be talking on the subject drugs used in myasthenia gravis, a condition of uh, neuromuscle disorder which is a debilitating condition, progressive condition and many celebrities have suffered from this. I am not going to name and I will leave to you to find out who are. What is myasthenia gravis? This is a neuromuscular disease and this is characterized by exacerbation on remissions of weakness and marked fatigue of skeletal muscle. So, there is sudden weakness and then improvement, then weakness and of most of these skeletal muscles primarily some and small muscles they affect first, the larger muscles they are also affected and the major issue here is this is an autoimmune disease and in this the acetylcholine receptor at the post junctional end plate is deranged. Now, this is if the acetylcholine receptor and this is the muscle and there is the receptor which gets deranged and I will tell you how this gets deranged and therefore, the acetylcholine which is a neurotransmitter in the neuromuscular junction is not able to act. And this is you see that this is the nerve ending and this is the muscle and here these are the nerve endings and this nerve endings if you just see the larger magnification of this, this is axonal ending and this is the acetylcholine which is in the vesicles. Now, here this is the muscle fibers and the receptors on the muscle fiber are cholinergic nicotinic receptor and this is called as a NM receptor nicotinic muscle receptor and on this receptor if this is the receptor there is an antibody which gets attached to this and therefore, this receptor becomes non-functional. And then the acetylcholine which is present here is not able to cause contraction and the contraction whatever is done is because of the remaining some receptors and therefore, it is a weak. Clinical presentation classical of myasthenia gravis is muscle weakness and this weakness worsens as the affected muscle is used repeatedly. If you are using is repeatedly the because these receptors get exhausted, so the weakness worsens. When you give some rest to the muscles because then the available receptors they are that get activated, so this improves. So, there is a cyclical weakness improvement weakness improvement. The classical feature is there is a ptosis, the dropping of eyelid and this is also sometimes leads to double vision because there is a weakness of ciliary muscles. Dysphagia because of the muscles the small muscles also gets affected. So, there is a difficulty in swallowing 
difficulty in chewing and difficulty later on in walking and lifting arms when the disease progresses. How you can diagnose this test? A very classical diagnosis of this that you give the adraphonium and adraphonium is a short acting anticholinesterase agent. This causes flooding of acetylcholine. That means the whatever acetylcholine is present, it will be excessive amount and so rapid IV injection is given 2 milligram of adraphonium chloride and this additional 8 mg dose if no response after 45 seconds and what you see with adraphonium brief improvement in muscle strength and brief improvement is because the whatever the muscle are present whatever the near the receptor is present where the antibody is not able to affect this is the antibody covered and the excessive acetylcholine will stimulate this and this will cause some improvement which is temporary. But if this is not and this is indicative of myasthenia gravis, but if there is increase in muscle weakness, this may cause, so there is a brief improvement and there is an increase in muscle weakness and if there is an increase in muscle weakness, this indicates that there is a cholinergic crisis. That means, there is excessive choline acetylcholine which causes severe contraction and this will again leads to muscle weakness. So, there is a two things myasthenia gravis if there is a improvement with the adraphonium which is a short acting anticholinesterase agent increasing acetylcholine improves that is myasthenia gravis. If there is a excessive acetylcholine in normal condition there will be contraction and this will cause cholinergic crisis, the muscle will go into the spasm. What is the treatment of this? Treatment of this is symptomatic treatment largely and symptomatic treatment you give anticholinesterase inhibitors. Mind you, this is a competitive. You increase the acetylcholine, very high amount of acetylcholine in the synapse in the neuromuscular junction and that can be done by decreasing its uh, metabolism by cholinesterase and that you do by anticholinesterase inhibitors. The drugs used anticholinesterase inhibitors are pyridostigmine, neostigmine and ambinomian ambinonium. The other because this is a immune mediated disorder, immunomodulators are also used that is glucocorticoids and azathioprim, cyclosporin, cyclophosphamide and intravenous immunoglobulins and many times combination of these two are also given. Of the anticholinesterase inhibitors, the drugs commonly used as I said pyridostigmine, neostigmine and ambinonium. These are quaternary ammonium compound by that it means that they do not cross blood brain barrier and therefore, CNS side effects are not seen or minimally seen as against the physostigmine which is also anticholinesterase, but it crosses blood brain barrier. So, physostigmine, why physostigmine is not used in myasthenia gravis because it crosses blood brain barrier and why neostigmine is used because it does not cross blood brain barrier being quaternary ammonium compound. The mechanism this retard degradation of acetylcholine that occurs because of cholinesterase enzyme in neuromuscular junction. The symptoms which uh, like limb and bulbar symptoms that is dysphagia 
fatigue in chewing and dysarthria responds better to anticholine strays than ocular manifestation that is diplopia and ptosis. Now, ptosis and diplopia they respond very slowly and if you give physostigmine the, the symptom of dysphagia which is a more problematic improves faster. Now, there are two agents which are commonly used pyridostigmine and neostigmine. Pyridostigmine is preferred oral medication due to longer duration of action and here this is 30 to 120 milligram 3 times daily and this is dose is titrated according to the patient condition. Neostigmine is available as neostigmine bromide which can be given by oral route and neostigmine metal sulphate which is given by intra uh, muscular or subcutaneous injection a parenteral route and the dose here is 1.5 milligram suitable intervals during the day and the usual dose is 5 to 20 milligram. The cholinergic features will be the major adverse drug reaction of these because they are cholinesterase inhibitors and naturally the side effect will be muscarinic, abdominal cramps, there will be intestinal motility will increase, so there will be diarrhea increased salivation, bronchial secretions, nausea, sweating, bradycardia, these are all symptoms of excessive cholinergic supply. On the nicotinic side because the places where the receptors are still available, this will cause fasciculations and muscle cramps. Prophylactic treatment for these adverse drug reaction is you give anticholinergics given thrice daily. So, anticholinergics are given to prevent muscarinic receptor action and you require only at the nicotinic site and this is glycopyrate and pro propanthaline and hyoscyamine sulphate. But this corrective measure itself can sometimes cause overcorrection and there will be dryness of mouth, constipation and urinary retention. For this there will be also diarrhea because the intestine movement will be increased and sometimes to correct that one gives loperamide. The other group of drug is uh, immunomodulator and uh, because this is a immune med mediated disease and the steroids prednisolone most commonly used onset of effect is 2 to 3 weeks it takes and time for a maximum effect is 5 to 6 months. Sometimes the drugs which are steroid because all steroids have side effects and I am not going to talk on the different side effects of steroid including hair growth uh, and uh, Cushing syndrome like uh, features. So, the drugs which have steroid sparing agents, these are azathioprim, cyclophosphamide, cyclosporin and the onset is usually very slow, it takes 6 months and time for maximum effect is also longer, it may take 1 year and these azathioprim, cyclophosphamide are used mainly in refractory cases. For rapid treatment, the onset you give intravenous immunoglobulin and here the onset of action is usually between 1 and 7 days, but also the benefit lasts shorter for 3 to 6 weeks. Lastly, the plasma pheresis is also done and this is a plasma exchange this directly removes acetylcholine receptor antibodies from the circulation. So, plasma pheresis will remove the antibodies and then the fresh antibodies will come therefore, plasma pheresis is a another approach. People also do thymectomy in cases of thymoma associated myasthenia because that 
is any some time which is used. So, if I summarize the myasthenia gravis is a neuromuscular disorder where the cholinergic nerve endings get covered by antibodies and the treatment is increased acetylcholine supply by giving choline esterase inhibitors. These are the quaternary ammonium compound which do not cross blood brain barrier. Physostigmine is not used because this goes into the blood brain barrier. The side effect of these drugs would be those because of increased cholinergic supply that is salivation, diarrhea and uh, respiratory uh, bronchial spasm and the treatment of this you give anticholinergic drugs as a prophylactic for the side effects. The other mechanism of another approach of treatment give steroids or immunosuppressants and prednisolone and then steroid sparing agents like azathioprine or cyclophosphamide. And lastly, in some cases, thymectomy is done. Thank you very much.